But I didn't, I didn't tell you, Lord Jesus, to bring me all the way here to Seattle. Amen. So, so in the midst of that process, I, I've experienced lots of hurts from pastors and lots of hurts from choir members and, and church folks. And, and I'm like, okay, Lord, here's this opportunity. I at least want to be close to home. So if I can be close to home, then I can do this thing on my own. So just in case it doesn't work out, God, I, I can trust you, but I don't have to trust you as much because I can just go right back to my house and be all right, keep my same job that I've been having for 13 years, and I will be okay, Lord. So, so how do we trust God? We trust him by not relying on ourselves. Amen? So don't depend on you. Don't depend on you. Uh, most of us have faced disappointments. Which have taught us that we can only depend on ourselves. Good. But living the life God has called us to means unlearning that lesson. Wow. We have to unlearn and retrain ourselves. The pastor kind of said it. He said, Y'all, I've been ministering you guys for 20, 10 years, and you guys have hurt me. I don't know how to love you. I was listening to you. Come on. Amen. And so, Pastor said, but the only way to love you is to love you through the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you're dealing with a life situation and the circumstances are even an opportunity, the first thing that you need to do is trust God. And how do you trust God? That means that you do not depend on you. Can I get a witness in this house? Come on, can I get a witness in this house? Hallelujah. See, see, what I've discovered in this process of transitioning here is that God loves me more than I love myself. Right. And so here I am protecting myself and saying, oh, you know what, I, I really don't. Baby, it's a great opportunity. We sat on our porch and we looked at the team and said, babe, it's really a great opportunity. But you know what? I don't know if I, I, don't know if I can trust him that, to be that far away. God, really? Amen. And so and in the midst of your circumstances, you want to trust God. Somebody give God some praise right there. Yeah. But listen, but listen. But sometimes trusting him completely can be hard. Amen. But what we have to do is we have to surrender our plans wow. to the Lord. Come on. Jeremiah 29 says, for I know the plans. God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, say the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you, yeah. but to give you an expected end. Okay, Lord, yeah, I know that. Yeah. But I'm dealing with this situation. How do I trust you? That means I need to step outside of who I am. Yeah, yeah. Don't depend on me, my wisdom, my knowledge, the things that I know. Yeah. And I need to trust God. Good work. Good work. Are you going to walk with me this evening? Yeah. We're going to talk. We gonna, I, I want to share this with you because I'm ministering to myself. Yeah. Amen. I'm ministering to myself. The next thing that we need to do after surrendering, we need to cry out to God. Yeah. Uh, when I moved here, moving here, I had to cry out to Him. Yeah. Meaning, I had to pray to the Lord and seek Him and say, God, is this for me? Is this yeah. what you want for me? Yeah. So, crying out to Him. When we're in worship and we're, getting, we're lifting our hands and we're praising, and I'm crying out and I'm saying, Lord, I thank you, right. it's because I've been in a position to where I had to really. Really trust him. Yeah. Amen. So not long after we got here, and this is why the scripture speaks to me. My wife said, Oh, baby, I'm having some pain in my side, and I just don't really feel that we need to go to the doctor. I yeah. said, Okay, you know, probably something. Nothing ain't nothing. Just take some ibuprofen with me, okay? I'm like, okay, Lord. I'm way up here. You know, I've been having my doctors for 20 some odd years. I, 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 I'm nervous. So we go to the doctor and we get the report and the doctor says, oh, well, your wife's going to have to have surgery. And I'm like, oh, no. Lord, I'm trusting you. Yeah. And so in the midst of trusting him, we have to learn how to cry out to him. Yeah. Surrendering to God begins with our lips. Yeah. It begins with our lips and our thoughts. Yeah. We need more than a commitment to depend on him, yeah. but we have to cry out to him. When we cry out to him, that means that we're praying. We admit that his ways are higher than ours. We admit that God's ways, it's higher than ours. It's so much higher. So in the midst of 
your trouble, in the midst of your trial, in the midst of being far away from home, for me, yeah. I'm having to trust God with yeah. everything yeah. that's on the inside of me. Amen. Yeah. So we walk through the we walk through the through the uh, to the uh, to the surgery, and the doctor said, "Well, it'll be this long of a surgery. It'll be about two hours." And it's like, okay. And two hours came, and still no doctor. Three hours came, still no doctor. Four hours came, doctor came. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm waiting on my answer because I prayed to you. I cried out to you and I sought you. Yeah. And I trust you in the midst of my circumstance, in the midst of my situation, God, I trust you. And I want to ask you a question tonight. Why is it that we pray? We pray for answers. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. We pray for answers. We communicate with God. Yeah. See, sometimes we get too busy to communicate with our Father. Yeah. So, oh, man, I gotta go to a basketball game. Oh, man, I gotta get, pick my kid up from the soccer game. Oh, I gotta go to church because I said I'm a person. Oh, I gotta go preach because I'm a pastor. Oh, I gotta go do this. And sometimes we get too busy. And when we get busy, we, we lose our lifeline. That's good. That's good. So I'm going to share with you tonight, do not lose your lifeline. Be intentional about crying out to him. Prayer does not have a position. Prayer is a disposition, but it's not a position. You don't have to get on your knees to pray. So even when you're in worship, pray to God. Cry out to him for whatever it is you need. And as you're crying out to him, he will send you the answers. As Daniel prayed, the Bible says, the angel said, I heard you. Yeah. I heard you so many days ago, but I can get to you. Why can I get to you? Because I had the Prince of Prince. He was fighting me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he had to call the archangel to get that answer to him. Yeah. And so in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your trial, as you're trusting God, as you're walking with him, make sure that you cry out to him. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we hand over the keys of our lives and our families to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The third, thing, the third thing that I want to share with you as a nugget is that we have to run from evil. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you're trusting God, when you're doing God's will, when you're doing His way, and you're doing good, and you're doing right, and everything's going well, you have to still learn how to run from evil. Uh -huh. well, see, see, when I was, or when you're wanting to be a better person, uh, me moving here, I was like, oh yeah, I think I'm going to move to Seattle, and you know, and God is really the blessing, and you know, I'm just thanking God for, for this move. Here I come, negative Nancy, negative Tim. They said, he ain't need to move on me now, man. But see, the plan that God has for your life, yeah. when God has a plan for your life, you have to trust Him even in the midst of the naysayers. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's some of you here tonight that's dealing with a circumstance and a situation, and there are some naysayers that's in your ear, but I want to encourage you tonight, you need to run from evil. Come on, somebody. Run, somebody say, run from evil. Uh, see, there's so much There's so much in this world that can clutter our relationship yeah. with God. Uh -huh. It's the, the flesh. The Bible says in John chapter 2, verse number 16, the flesh, John says it, he says, the flesh and the lust, the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Sometimes these things can clutter us from walking into what God has for us. And man, our young young men, young men, young women, we have sometimes we have we have three three gates that the enemy uses. The, the first gate is the air gate. Sometimes we have to protect ourselves from what we hear. We have to protect ourselves when we're conversating with people. We have to protect ourselves because evil will come in through your ears. Another thing, another gate that the enemy uses to attack us is he uses the eye gate. Ooh, wee, she looked good. Amen? Amen. And you, you, you married, but yet still, mm -hmm. you're like, mm, I don't need to look too hard. Amen? Yeah. So that's, that's the eye gate of something that the enemy uses. And oh my goodness. The next gate that he uses is the mouth gate. That's good. 
Sometimes our own mouth can get us in trouble. Sometimes when you're walking with God and you're walking and you're trusting him, sometimes you just need to keep your mouth closed and allow God to be God and trust him in the process. Because sometimes when you open your mouth, you, you hurt your own self and don't even realize it. Amen. 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 So trust God in the midst of your circumstances and make sure that you run from evil. Somebody say, I got to run, I got to run, I got to run. Come on, say it. Say, I got to run, I got to run, I got to run. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes the only way to live the life God wants us to live is by separating ourselves from bad influences that keeps dragging us down. Does anybody have any bad influences? Sometimes your own brother, your own family member could be that person that drives you down. Amen? And sometimes you have to disassociate yourselves with, with those folks. You have to disassociate yourselves with people that hope holes in your boat. Because for long, if you keep associating with yourself, you're going to find yourself sinking. So disassociate yourself, run from evil, and make sure that you trust and lean and depend on God in the midst of your situation. Somebody give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. The, the, next, the next nugget I want to share with you tonight is Make sure that you put God first in your life. Somebody say, put God first. Somebody say, put God first. See, we have to learn how to make God the Lord over our lives if we're going to trust him. See, there are some folks that say, yeah, I'm saved. I saved. But yet, are you saved that have you made the Lord the Lord over your life? Which means that he rules and he reigns in your life. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. Somebody, somebody. somebody come on and talk back to me. Yes, come on now. Okay, make him Lord over all things. We make him Lord over everything. But when it comes to this one thing I want to share with you, and that's money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We say, okay, Lord, you can be Lord over my job. You can be Lord when I have a tough situation. But I don't want you to be Lord over my finances. Thank you, y'all. Y'all quiet tonight, but I want to share with you. We, we, we want him to be Lord over everything, but just not our money. See, money in lots of cases determines where we live, where we work, what we eat, what kind of car we drive, and a whole a lot of other stuff. But if we can surrender that to God, then God will make the determination, and God will bless you exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ask or think. Can I get a witness in this place? See, if we trust God with the first of our wealth, we're truly showing how we trust and depend on him. Yeah. Handing over the first part of our paycheck yeah. Yeah. Talk about it. Talk about it. is hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And can I be honest with you? There's been many days where I, standing before you, yeah. struggle with, oh man, God, I just moved here. I'm going back to that because I got to tell you my story because I want you to know who I am. Yeah. Like, I, I just moved here. You know, my wife doesn't have a job yet. Yeah. You know, and so I find so many excuses and we can find so many excuses. We make them out of everything except our finances. Yeah. 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 Can I be real in this place tonight? Yeah. We do that. And you know what? We don't need a defense attorney <laughs> because we come up with every excuse in the book. We don't need Pastor, I don't need you. To, I don't need you to defend me. You know why? Because I, I can make those decisions. I, I, I got this, and you know, but I, you know, and I just don't know, and I, and I can't see. But the word says, "Trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart." It says, "Not lean." It says, "Come on." It says, "Just lean not to your own understanding." And so, a lot of times, we struggle with that thing because we're like, but. I got an AT&T bill and a car payment that's living in the second room over here. And at the first of the month, they're going to come knocking on my door, Jesus. Yeah. And, 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 and so, so because they're going to come knocking on my door, Jesus, I, I got to lean a little bit to my understanding because... <laughs> so I ask you the question tonight, what side of the fence are you on? And are we going to trust God? Half the way? 
Oh, we're going to trust him all the way. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, you're going to trust God halfway. Are you? Yeah, I'm trying to do a little stuff, a little business. You know, I'm trying to work this thing out, man. But, you know, man, there's just so many stuff just blocking me. You know, I'm trying to do this. I don't know what I am. You know, this is what they're telling me. No. Are you going to trust God half the way? Come on. Are you going to trust him? Yeah, the doctor just said this. Well, are you going to trust God right, right. all the way? Yeah. Are you going to trust him half the way? See, giving your first use not only means your paycheck, it means everything. Yeah. It's, it's everything. Yeah. Yeah. So when was the last time you used your vehicle to go drop somebody off at home that was outside in the church? Yeah. And you, bum, bum. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can we, can we talk about it tonight? Yeah. Amen. So if we're going to trust God, we have to open up our minds and think about the, the big picture of it all. Yeah. It's not just trusting God in the midst of our situation. Right. And certainly, it's trusting Him with everything. Yeah. Everything that's on the yeah. inside of us. Yeah. That's some singers that say, oh my God, I'm so nervous about singing this song. <laughs> but you got to trust God. Yeah. you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And you're going to lean not to your own understanding, but all. The word of the Lord says all, all, and Greek, it means, all. It means all. you got to trust him in everything. Amen. Amen. Because he loves you more than you love yourself. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God loves you more than you can ever love yourself. Yeah. And so when God calls you, you answer. Yeah, yeah. Say, God, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We sing a song that says, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, we sing that here, right? Yes. So when we say yes, I'm saying yes because I'm like, Lord, you told me to come here. Yes. And I, I said yes, so I'm going to trust you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with some stuff. They are going to make it an excuse. But, um, you know, Lord, my wife just started back working, and I'm, I'm trying to slow. This, uh, but uh, I'm just, I'm trying to make it. But God, God told me, he said, I to trust that. <laughs> and if you're here tonight, uh, if you're here tonight, yes. and you're dealing with something, and you're going through something, or you're looking at life and looking at the big picture tonight, yeah. I want to share with you tonight that you need to just let go, let God, and trust Him. Yeah. Trust Him. Yeah. When you say, oh, I got this interview, but I'm going to get nervous. In it. No, you need to trust God. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm supposed to go up and, and you're not supposed to get this car and I don't know what the bank's going to say, but no, you need to trust God. That's good. Trust Him. Yes. Yeah. Can I get a witness in this place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put God. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah, neighbor. Say, put God first. Put God first. Say, put God first. Put God. There's a song that we say that says, Jesus be the center of it God, 
mighty bless you in this place. Hallelujah. The next thing, the next thing that we, I want to nugget, I want to give you, is we need to learn how to check ourselves by God's word. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can you check yourself before you run? Hey. Oh, no, I know y'all know that, right? Come on now, Pastor, I know you know. You can check yourself before you and it's very important to do that, okay? Let's be honest. We are we aren't so good at evaluating ourselves. Oh boy. We will go to great yeah. lengths again to make those excuses. We excuse our behavior. <laughs> we excuse our actions and even the sin. Oh, just a little bit. Yeah. No, it wasn't a little bit. Uh, you did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Yep. Learn how to check yourself. Again, who needs a defense attorney? Wow. I can make excuses all day yeah. for the stuff that I've been through. Yeah. Oh, I, I, oh, I'm going to protect myself because I know these pastors. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to protect myself because I know these deacons. I'm going to protect myself because I know church folk. Wow. We can make excuses, excuses all day, but we have to learn how to check ourselves by the word of God so good. Yeah. and walk the way God wants us to walk. Talk the way yeah. he wants us to talk. Yeah. Live the way God wants us to live. Y'all want to start preaching tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have to check ourselves by the word of God. And, 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 and a key thing to have is a is a is an accountability partner. Amen. Oh, that's right. Baby, I love you, but you won't be too accountable. Can you give me a break sometime? That's right. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go take that mic from him. <laughs> my wife holds me accountable for everything. I'm like, really? Uh -huh. Amen. James, that's not right. I'm like, baby. <laughs> look, look, look here. I'm like, they just gave me one. Box of you know how much I love it. Take it back. Because it's not yours. But babe, I love chicken. This is, oh, baby, it's two thighs in here. Come on, my Jesus. James, you need to take it back. It's not yours. Take it back. Uh, but babe, yeah, uh, you know what? They uh, they called and said uh, that you we don't have to pay for uh, this because something happened. I'm like, well, I didn't even call back. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Here comes my wife, James. You need to call and verify that. I'm like, hey, but if I call and verify it. They're going to find it. And they're going to say, oh, you didn't pay for that. Oh, my goodness. Part of checking yourself by the word. Checking yourself with the word of God. Amen? Amen. And then somebody give God some praise right there. And listen, if we're going to truly, 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 truly trust God, we have to constantly walk in truth. Amen. See, a lot of times when you check yourself, you don't want to get to the point of not checking yourself because the only way sometimes you can find out about who you are is when something bad happens. It's like, you need to constantly be checked. Because if you don't constantly check yourself, then you're going to slowly slip, slowly go over here, slowly, and then something bad will happen. Or either you're going to slowly slip over this way, you're going to slowly go over this way, and then you're going to wake up and see yourself in the mirror one day, and you're going to say, man, look at me. Yeah. This is not who I am. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. So why even get there? That's good. When you can check yourself yeah. before you riggedy, riggedy wreck yourself. Okay. Right. Amen. Very, very important to remember, guys. Check yourself by the word of God. Somebody give him some praise right there. Psalms, Psalms, Psalms 119 and 11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the, the, the next thing that I want to share with you, next thing I want to share with you, two, two things and then, and then I'm done tonight, is the next thing is we have to learn how to listen 
to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. He will direct your path. He will make it clear. Yeah. Yeah. So trust the Lord with all the heart. Lean not your understanding, but all the ways of God that He will direct your path. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because see, there's often times that I've discovered that when we pray, sometimes we just pray and be like, Amen, thank you, Jesus, and get up. If we're going to trust him and we pray to him and we cry to him and we're seeking answers, guess what we have to do? We got to listen. <laughs> we can't just say, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Woo, girl, I done prayed. <laughs> and I know the Lord, he's going to tell me what I need to do. The Lord's like, look, yeah. I'm trying to talk to you right now. Wow. Why are you getting up? Yeah. Don't get up. Oh, these old knees of mine. Keep on aching. And we, you know, and we have to learn how to listen to the Lord. Because see, there are some of us that are, that are 25, there's some of us that are 30, 33, 40, 50, 60, 70, and we still haven't received what it is that God has for us. Because guess what we're not doing? We're not listening to the voice of the Lord. We have to learn how to trust Him. And we have to pray to Him and commune with Him, communicate with that's very important to do. And so all these things I'm learning, I'm like, okay, Lord, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do this. This is this, 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 being in the presence of God. Every morning when my wife and I get up, the first thing we say is, good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. And we, I've learned that we have an unseen partner yeah. that walks alongside us every single day. So yeah, you, you may be in your car, you may be walking in the hallway, and you're like, okay, Lord, I got this boss, I got to deal with it. I need you to tell me what to say. Yeah. Yeah. Show me how to handle it, Lord. Show me what to deal with, God. Yeah. Okay, and they're looking at me funny over here, Lord. How do I handle this, Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Talk to your unseen partner. And your unseen partner says, okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to get back in your car, and I need you to sit there for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, your, your, your unseen partner says, okay, Lord, there's a guy that's on the starting line. There's a guy that has the potential to start, but he's on the sideline, 6'4", 260 pounds. The Lord may tell you to get up, go over to the sideline, slap him on upside his head, and shake him in the helmet like this. Come on, somebody. And when he gets mad at me, then guess what? The Holy Spirit then told you to do that, and now he gets a scholarship at a D1 college and he's doing what it is that he's supposed to be doing. And that's walking in the will of God. And if it wasn't for you listening to the Holy Spirit, then you would have done that. So you were part of that process. So how many of us listen to the Holy Spirit? That's right. That's good. How many of us walk alongside? Because the Holy Spirit will tell you, I need you to go up to sisters so and so, and I need you to tell them that they are more than a conqueror. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's good. And you know what we do sometimes? We don't do it. We hear it. We don't do it. We don't do it. And so I want to say this to you tonight that silence is dead. <laughs> yeah. Because when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you to do something, tells you to say something and you don't do it, you may be standing in the way of getting somebody delivered and set free. Yes. And because you're so self centered, that we are, we are. I don't trust you guys. I'm too, I'm too scared to say that. That ain't me. I don't do that kind of stuff. That's good. No. Ouch. You got to trust him. You got to listen to him. Because yeah. if you're going to trust him, you got to trust him. You got to trust him when you hear the voice of the Lord. You're like, okay, Lord, now, you're telling me to do this. Good. Good. Have you ever been there yeah. where the Lord says, I need you to do this? And guess what you do? You don't do it. And you're like, okay, I know he's telling me to do this. He's saying he's telling me to do this. That's good. And I'm, I'm going to stand right there and I'm going to just wait until he comes by. And then he walks by and you don't do it. <laughs> sure. Man, I've been there. So that means we're not, we're not doing, we're not trusting God. That's good. You got to trust him. You got to listen to him. You got to walk along. You got to walk with him because he walks with you. He gave us a gift. Jesus gave us a gift when he left. He left the Holy Spirit as a comfort for yes, us. Amen. Yeah. Right. So we have to trust him yeah. with everything that we have. Good. Good. Yeah. 
Lord, I got $2 in my pocket left. And this lady right here, you're telling me to pay for this honey bun in this Mountain Dew for this thing. <laughs> and all I got is $2 left. That's right. All right. God, God, you got to trust him. Yeah. You got to trust him. Yeah. And I'm in, I'm in a position in my life, all I can do is trust him. Ain't, ain't nothing else I can do. Right. Yeah. All I can do is trust him. There's a song that we sing that says, Lord, I, I trust you. I trust you. When we start, I'm ministering to me. That's right. yeah. Amen. I'm ministering to me because I, I got to learn how to trust him more yeah. and more every day. Yeah. Amen. And so if this blesses you tonight, just lift your hand and say, I got to learn how to trust you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God, we bless you with this place. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Yeah. The last thing that I want to share with you tonight is we have to learn how to rest in God's love. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So that you walk through that process, understand what God wants you to do, listen to the voice of the Lord, cry out to him, get those answers, then you can rest in the love of Jesus. Yes. Because remember, God loves you more than you love yourself. Right. I said, okay, Lord, I'm moving here. My kids are there. I'm moving here. I don't want to be close to them. And he said, he said, child, I love your churn. <laughs> this is how God talks to me. He talks to me in Gullah. I speak, you speak where I'm from, you speak a language called Gullah. So he talked to me, he said, I, he said, man, I love your churn more you love, man. Oh my I said, God. Okay, Lord, really? You love? Oh. And so I was, I was at home and I was like, I was talking to my wife. I was talking to my wife. And she said, I said to her, I said, baby, or something. This is like six, seven months ago, y'all. Uh -huh. I'm not kidding you. I said, baby, the Lord loves our children more than we love them. Yes. Oh my God. Do you remember what I told you? Oh, do you? Oh, no. see? 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 Yeah. Man, don't ask your wife in front of everybody. And she remembered what no. she said. And sometimes she ain't going to she ain't going to <laughs> But this is about six, seven months ago. And I said, I said, so me being concerned and worried about my son and about my daughters, my sons and my daughters, daughters, you telling me that you you won't take care of them and you love them more than what I do? Man. If you were here tonight and you dealing with the situation with your son or your daughter. And you on your knees and you praying and you have asking God to deliver them and to keep them. Guess what? He loves them more than you. Oh, but my son got he did he got that my daughter got this she doing that and they do. He loves them more than what you do. So when I move here, I'm like, okay, Lord, you tell them I got to trust, but I got my kid. Man, I love your kids more than you can ever love. Are you going to trust in the day with everything? Yeah, yeah. So good. But I got, a, I got a background. I got a criminal background. Uh -huh. Now you like. That's right. Uh -huh. He said, do you trust me? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Or are you going to make the excuse? Yeah. 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 He says, you can start your own business. That's right. Oh, hey. yeah. That's right. You don't, you don't need no. You, you can start your own business. Yeah. But, 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 oh, I didn't think about that. No. God, you, you, you're telling me that you got me. Solomon said, when he wrote this, he said, he knew, he said, just trust in the Lord. It's something so simple. It's so powerful. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Watch this. Situation. Look back. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Yeah. This is what it looks like. This is what they've been saying. But lean not to your own understanding. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct you. Hold up. So you're going to tell me, I just learned how to trust you 
and walk with the Holy Spirit? That you're going to be there to comfort me and to love me and to carry me and to hold me up? And you're going to tell me you love me more than I love myself? But I look good. I dress nice. I love myself, Jesus. He said, but I still love you more than you can love me. That's right. Amen. And I, listen, guys, I've been, I've, been in, I've, been, I've been in church a long time. Yeah. I'm a church kid. Yeah. All my kids are church kids. Yeah. They grew up from, and, and they grew up in, in car seats. That's right. While I'm in choir rehearsal. Come on, come on. They turn one. Get off your head in choir rehearsal. <laughs> Everybody in choir in the church, they know the kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. And me, grew up in the church 30 years. Yeah. But still, there's times in my life yeah. where sometimes it's hard for me to trust him in the midst of some stuff that I deal with. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I'm okay with saying that. Yeah. You know why? Right. Because I can keep trusting him. I can keep crying out to him. Yeah. I can keep going back to the door of grace. Yeah. He's going to still love me. He's, as a matter of fact, he loves me more than I love myself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That I can ever love me. Yeah. So tonight, I'm done. So tonight, if you're here tonight and you need to trust God and you want to trust God, we have some pastors here tonight that will pray over you in the midst of the situations that you're going through, whatever it is that you're dealing with. The doors of the church are now open. God bless you tonight.